So at this point, the RTX 2070 is around six years old. So I think it's time to go ahead and do a checkup and see how the card is doing in 2024. And for this one, I'm going to be testing 1080p, playing at 440p and 4K. We'll just make the video super long, so not needed. Uh, but I will test that DLSS and FSR if needed as well. Our first game is MW3, and we're playing at 1080p at a mix of low and medium settings. No DLSS or FSR yet. Hit me up with that. There we go. All right, here we go. First game. Playing on Cory, or a reskin of it. Not the best map, to be honest, but let's see how we go. And yeah, so far, guys, we're sitting in the 80s and the 90s. Not too bad. Feels pretty good so far. I've not played this game in a long while. At this point, I'm waiting for Black Ops 6, which will be coming out, or the beta will be coming out in a month, like mid-August or late August. Nice. This game wasn't too bad, to be honest, but it came after MW2, and uh, it was a reskin of it, pretty much. So it wasn't super popular. Uh, but it's infinitely better than MW2. Way more updates, way more content. And the game just feels better overall. What's this guy doing? That was close. Oops. Misclick. Weird lobby, man. Nobody's even playing. They're just like looking around. Maybe there's a challenge? Or a contract or something? Or maybe it's the first game on in a couple of months and the game's giving me an easy lobby. Regardless, I'll take it. I'm dead here, yeah. But yeah, I think for Black Ops 6, this game or this card will do fine. It's going to be in the same game engine. And the graphics aren't looking too much better. And also, the game is on PS4 and Xbox One. So I would imagine the performance wouldn't be too different to this game. Alright, first game is done. And to be honest, it wasn't too bad. Above 80 at all times. And I couldn't feel any stutters either. So, let's do a second game. Use DLSS and FSR. And see how we go. With DLSS, we got... No frame gen, but with FSR, we do have frame gen, so I will test them both out. Alright, here we go. Second game. Playing on a different map. Not sure how this one will play out, but so far we're sitting in the 110s and the 120s, so yeah, doing much better. And for the graphics, it's pretty good actually. Maybe a bit softer overall, but it's definitely usable. Oh, I'm dead. This guy's cracked. And yeah, I do have 160 ping. The ping is higher than the FPS, which is nice. It's kind of crazy how I put like, I put on hard point and domination. And it could not find me a game. I'm all the way out here at 160 ping. That is pretty wild. Bad aim. That was close. 160 ping though, that's not too bad to be honest. It feels pretty responsive. I saw him there. Hopefully he leaves me alone. No, I'm dead here for sure. Yep, I was mid-reload still. So yeah, around a 20 FPS increase. It does feel much better. And the graphics again are pretty unchanged. A bit softer of course, but it's definitely usable still. Now in Warzone, it's a whole different story. It does look far worse than that. I'm dead. Yep. I gotta react faster than that. I'll do two more lives and I'm gonna go ahead and back out. Well, not back out. But I'm gonna pause the game, enable FSR 3. And see how we go there. Fun map though. Not the same as the COD 4 thing I was thinking of, but... It's pretty fast paced, I like it. Alright, one more. Hold that. Black jacket. Lucky. Hmm. Do I peek this? So close. I 
I'm so dead. He's looking at me. Maybe not, actually. Wow. That melee was no one near me. Alright, I'm dead. There we go. Let's pause it here, guys. And switch to FSR 3. And try it again. Again, quality preset. And frame gen is active. Let's apply it. Two ping this time. Much better. But... Man, the FPS is not that much better. So I'm guessing frame gen isn't really working here. Like last time. Man, 2 ping feels so nice. That was so responsive. So yeah, frame gen in this game, at least for me, is pretty broken. Try it out and see how you do. But for me, not really working. We're still sitting in the 90s and the 100s. So a bit lower than DLSS pretty much. Um... Uh, but for the graphics, it looks fantastic. It's very good. It's not as good as the LSS, I would say, but it's close enough. So if frame gen does work, then it's a, it's a good choice. Uh, but if you're like me and you can't use frame gen, then just disable it and use the LSS. What? That guy was eating. Look at that guy, man. Look at that guy. That is not it, bud. It's gotta be right there. Yep, I knew it. I knew it. This sniper guy, dude. <laughs> the glint k kills me. Oh, I almost had both. Cool. Let's back out, guys, and see how we go in Warzone. Yeah, playing Warzone now, and as you guys can see, the FPS and the overall requirements are definitely higher here. I think in MP we had, or we used, around 5 gigs of VRAM. In Warzone, we're using up 7.2 gigs. Way higher with the same settings. And the FPS is sitting in the 60s in the sky. It's quite the decrease. Yeah, in the sky, we're sitting at 60 to the mid-50s. That is crazy, but not surprising. Let's see how we go, though. All right, down here, much better. In the 80s again. You can have the box. 70 FPS upstairs. Look, I wanna I wanna leave this place and go outside, but it's kind of tough because we are playing quads here, and I'm not really a Warzone player. I do want to see what they do with Warzone. I swear, it was announced that Verdance was coming back into this game, but it hasn't yet. And Black Ops 6 is coming out in a couple months. So, not sure about that one. Team is going down here. Let's go check it out. Cracked him. Will he kill me here? Probably. No, he won't. Oh, I'm out of here. Let's go. Second chance. I've got no, I've got no armor, though. That's crazy. Yeah, so far, it's definitely playable, guys. Not the most competitive, of course, at 80 FPS or 70 FPS even, but it's definitely playable. Right there, it felt very laggy, though. 60 FPS for a second. That was not great. So yeah, I think DLSS is definitely a must for this one. Because at times it does fall down into the 60s, and it's quite aggressive. Doesn't feel great. I'm kind of trapped here. I can't really leave, and I can't go over here, because there's so many players. Look at this guy. Am I dead here? Time for the LSS. Let's see how we go. Again, beforehand, we had around 60 FPS up to 80 FPS. Hopefully, we can avoid the 60 FPS range with this one. Bad place to land. No guns. But outside, FPS is doing better, for sure. It's sitting in the, like, the 80s on average now. So I heard someone there. And indoors I should do probably 90 to 100. Hmm, now what's this over here? Let's try this out. Okay, it's just like a airstrike, I guess. You're done, buddy. Run away. Hmm. Under what do we go? 
There's a guy definitely over here. Probably hiding under the water. Yep. He's on the ship now. I'm kind of... Okay, let's go. Why is my guy coughing? What's happening? Is he... It's hard to see where he is exactly, but his friends are coming. We've got one of them. Downed him. This guy melts. The classic ACR. Alright, I get to finally fly over here and see if the FPS falls down into the 60s. Hopefully no one's over here. And yeah, there we go. We're now sitting in the 70s. It's not perfect, but it's definitely an improvement. I did plan on testing FSR 3 as well with frame gen, but uh, the frame gen part isn't really working, so I'm going to skip it and we can move on to our next game. And for our third game, we're playing Alan Wake 2. We're going to 1080p and add the medium preset. Here we go with that. There we go. And no RT. This card can do RT, but not really worth using. And again, we have DLSS, but it's running at native, so it's not really active. And you can go ahead and get the FSR 3 mod, but it's a paid mod. Uh, so I want to avoid using that because I don't have it. And you're playing at native, 1080p. At the lake, we're sitting at 30 FPS. That is pretty nuts. I thought it would do better, but 30 FPS is what we're getting. And the FPS is playable, I would say, but you will need a controller for this. If you're playing at 30 FPS, and our VRAM is maxed out at 8 gigs, so might become an issue at some point. Uh, but playing right now, it's feeling pretty good. Can't feel any stutters, any freezes. It's definitely usable, I would say. Second section in New York, doing much better in the 40s now. This area is far more CPU intensive than it is GPU intensive. So we're seeing a decent FPS bump versus before. So yeah, mid to high 30s and the low 40s here. So yeah, that's the base test. Let's back out, enable DLSS, try it all again and see if we can get 60 FPS at all. Not sure if we can get 60 FPS, probably not. But if you use this with FSR 3 frame gen or the frame gen mod, 60 FPS at that point should be quite doable. And there we go, a pretty good FPS bump. We're now sitting in the mid 40s and the high 40s. So from the low 30s all the way up here. And for the graphics, it looks fantastic I would say. It's not as good as before, but it's definitely usable and sharp enough. And lastly back in New York, and look at that, 60 FPS is ours. Okay, I spoke too soon. It can fall into the 50s, in the mid 50s. Uh, but yeah, 60 FPS here for the most part. Feeling pretty nice. And yeah, regardless, with frame gen, with the frame gen mod, I think 60 FPS is very much doable with this card. The fourth game is Red Dead 2, and we're playing at a mix of medium, low, and high. Here we go with that. There we go. Let me have a look again. V Sync, I don't know why it keeps turning itself on, but disable all this. And yeah, let's see how we go. A bounty on my head, huh? Five dollars. I think last time I was playing with a 4060, I probably killed someone by accident. My little horse, look at him. The smallest horse out here. And yeah, guys. Above 60 FPS with these. This game is from 2018, but still quite intensive. Who is this guy? What's that? You're dead. Isn't that crazy? My poor horse, no! No, the poor, the horse. Is the horse dead? Okay, I feel bad, dude. All right, well, we're down a horse. I feel pretty bad about it. I'm gonna not save the game. Hopefully he comes back. And uh, lastly, let's enable DLSS. And see how we go with that. Gonna use the quality preset. Let's apply it. For the sharpening, I would keep it on the lower side because in this game it does look very over sharpened. And even now, the game does look a bit over sharpened. So although the sharpening level uh, was on the low end, in the actual game it does look very over sharpened still. So 
For me personally, I would drag it down a bit further and make the game look a bit softer. All right, that is Red Dead 2 done, guys. Let's back out and try our next game. After Red Dead 2, we're playing Avatar The Frontiers of Pandora. We're playing a 1080p at the medium preset. This game has RT built in, so we can't turn it off, at least fully. So it will be far more intensive than other games. But here we are with that. And no upscaling yet, but we can use DLSS as well as FSR 3 with frame gen. Man, this graphics card is not having a good time today. The fan keeps ramping up and then coming down again. It's a very loud card, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, so far we're sitting in the 40s and the 50s. So using DLSS should give us at least a mostly 60 FPS experience. I think at that point it will fall down to the 50s still, but still, it is a playable experience, I would say. Man, down here though. 32 FPS. That is crazy. This game does look incredible though. I will say, I think the FPS loss, or I guess how intensive the game is, is definitely, I would say, worth it. Because you have games where they look kind of mid, uh, but they are still very intensive. Uh, but this game, it's very intensive, but it does look fantastic. And now with DLSS, with the balance preset, we are all the way up into the mid 40s, from the low 30s. So, it is an FPS gain. And the game looks fantastic still guys, it is as good as before, it is super sharp, it looks great. Uh, but still, can't quite hit 60 FPS here. And lastly with frame gen active, we're now sitting in the mid 70s and the 80s. So there we go, 60 FPS is doable, uh, but you will need some fake frames in between to make it possible. Hmm, the grass is bugging out though. The grass is bugging out. It's kind of unusual here, look at that. And the game is definitely stuttering far more as well. I think for me, I would probably use DLSS for this one. But if you want to get 60 FPS and above, you can with frame gen and FSR 3. So keep that in mind. Alright, time for our next game. Next is Forza Motorsport. And this game was very inconsistent. It crashes a lot on startup, so keep that in mind, it isn't very stable at all, but it's finally running, we're playing at 1080p and at the medium settings, no DLSS yet. Here we are with that, it's a mix of medium and high I guess actually. There we go, I'm going to be playing on keyboard and mouse here, hopefully I don't crash immediately. I've chosen a heavy rainfall as the weather, so it will get quite intensive. Yeah, not too bad, surprisingly. We're sitting in the... I'm um, playing in manual. Great. Gotta pause it and change it. But yeah, this game is doing a lot better than release, that's for sure. Now, for ray tracing, I would probably disable it, I would say. It's not really worth having RT in this game. It does make the cars look better. Uh, but over time, it does lag and make the game uh, run worse. And at the same time, it is definitely VRAM hungry as well. So for this card, not really worth using. But yeah, as it is right now, no need for DLSS, it is playing super well, above 60 FPS at all times, on average in the 70s actually. Get out of the way. And we're now up to the Crew Motor Fest, and again at 1080p, and at the high preset. This game has no upscaling features, so we are playing at native the whole way through. Here we go with that, there we go. This game does look fantastic, way better than the Crew 2 but at the same time it is also way more intensive. And at the same time it's got a 60 FPS cap, so we can't see above 60 if it does go above it. Not too bad surprisingly, we are sitting at 60 FPS and the GPU is mostly utilized as well, mainly sitting in the 90s and the high 90s, but it can fall down into the mid 80s as well. Alright, there we go, doing a race, and at this point it's going to be far more CPU intensive than it is GPU intensive, so again 60 FPS and the GPU still have some headroom left over on that. So yeah, there we go. The Crew Motor Fest is definitely playable. Time for our next game. From one Ubisoft game to the next, we're now playing AC Mirage. This game is super well optimized, so on 2070 it will run extremely well. And I think for this one, we're gonna go with Ultra, no DLSS, and then if it runs poorly, which it shouldn't, we'll use DLSS as well. And he'll be over that. Cool. 
And there we have it, 60 FPS in the town. It's running perfectly smoothly. There's a scene at the start of the game uh, where the FPS can fall quite heavily, which I will try out in a second. Uh, but from my experience in the free realm, the game runs quite well. Again, above 60 FPS. Uh, VRAM at 7 gigs, so getting quite up there. We have 8 in total again, but still shouldn't be an issue for this game at all. Flying up into the sky. Yep, still 60 FPS. No issues at all. GP is fully maxed out, as you would expect. And there we have it. Now let me show you the intensive scene in the intro as well. And we can move on from here. Let's go on this little zip line with our bare hands. Seems legit. Coming down here. And I'm just see the FPS fall right now. There we go, 50 FPS. So yeah, the FPS can fall below 60 FPS. But for the most part, should be at 60 and above without the need of DLSS. So let's pause it here guys, try it again with DLSS and see if 60 FPS is doable in this section. Alright, there we go guys. So far we're sitting in the 70s and the and the 80s. I can't get on the zip line. there we go. Let's see how far the FPS falls down though. There we go, 60 FPS. So we gained 10 to 15 FPS on top of native. And for the graphics, a bit softer like before, or like the other games, but still looks fantastic and is definitely usable. Alright, I think that's pretty much it for AC Mirage. Okay, that was just <laughs> so glitchy. Next on the list is Jedi Survivor. This game runs like crap, no doubt about that, and the settings are honestly broken as well. Like down here, or I guess up here, we have FSR 2 active at balanced and DLSS 3 active as well. That doesn't make any sense. So broken, but we are playing at the high settings. If I can disable FSR, that would be nice. Let's see how we go. I'm not sure why, but the settings menu is just so broken. I can't change the resolution or even the settings properly without it messing up. There we go. So far, sitting in the 50s. GP is fully maxed out, VRAM at 7 gigs. It is definitely having a harder time on this game. But here, it's definitely playable. Again, 50 FPS feels like 60. It's kind of hard to tell if the FPS count is off. Please! There we go, nice. Take care of these guys real quick. Chop them in half. Nice. Uh, coming up here, falling into the 40s, the mid 40s. So I think if you're playing on a keyboard and mouse, DLSS is definitely needed. All right, let's go ahead and leave. And now with DLSS at the balance preset, we're now sitting in the 80s and the 90s. Much better. There we go, 70 FPS over here instead of the high 40s or the mid 40s. For the graphics, it's definitely worse, I would say. It's not a sharpness issue. It just looks weird. I see a bunch of shimmering, for example. Pixelation. It's definitely not as good as other games, that's for sure. And Hogwarts Legacy is our next game. And we're playing at the high settings. No DLSS, no RT. Alright, Great Spawn. Near, I think, Hogsmeade over here, right? Yeah, it's up there, I think. Let's fly backwards to the castle. We can actually go to the Forbidden Forest and see how far the FPS falls down over there because so far we are sitting in the 60s. The game looks fantastic. It looks gorgeous, man. Flying through the forest now. Still holding the mid to high 50s and the low 60s. And if you want to get more frames, you can pause it here, enable DLSS, and go from there. So now using DLSS at the quality preset, we're now sitting in the 80s and the graphics look unchanged. That looks fantastic. Flying back to the forest. Yep, falling into the 70s and the mid 60s now. So you have plenty of headroom. We are doing just fine. So there we go. Time for our last game. I will see you guys there. For our last game, we're playing Cyberpunk and at the high preset, no DLSS. There we go. 
this game has an FSR 3 mod that you can install as well, and you can get an extra 30 to 40 FPS on top. But sadly, I don't have that installed. But it doesn't matter, because as you guys can see, we are sitting above 60 FPS just fine. So again, native, we're sitting in the 60s, with the LSS, probably in the 70s and the 80s, and with frame gen, with the mod, uh, you're sitting in the 90s and the 110s. So yeah, although this card is very old, from 2018 I believe, it does a fantastic job with today's games. So yeah, I think at this point it will depend on the game. Some it will have a harder time with, but even then you can use DLSS or any upscaling and try to get 60 FPS that way. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Next video. See you guys there.